my fellow Aquibomites, my wife, Her Excellency, Dr. Mrs. Martha Udom Emanuel, and I felicitate with you on the joyous occasion of our state's anniversary. 33 years ago today, this state, a blessed land of promise, a land adorned with lush green vegetation, rich in various agricultural produce, blessed with other vital mineral resources, such as oil and gas, and above all, a land of great and God-fearing people, united in love and brotherhood, was finally presented to us through a proclamation by the then military president, General Ibrahim Badamusi Babangida, retired. The happiness and excitement that attended this wonderful gift was deep, and the echoes of joy had reverberated through the nooks and crannies of the new land. There were wild dancing on the streets, as the trumpets of melodious music filled the air. The piece of real estate was appropriately named God's own property, Akwabasibum State. My dear compatriots, 33 years after her birth, I stand here today to proclaim with a deep sense of humility and responsibility that the land nurtured and shaped by shared love and endless possibilities has become a shining city on the hill, looked upon with deep admiration for what we have become, for what we are, and for what we would become. Today, the Aquibum story has been chronicled in 33 spectacular chapters. Each chapter, a celebration of our people's faith in their capacity to fulfill the dreams of their founding fathers. Each chapter, an acknowledgement of the fact that the awesome love and blessings from the only God whom the state is named after is ever present and enduring, standing guard over her, protecting her vital assets and defining the course of her growth and development. My fellow compatriots, I stand here today as I've done in the past five years, humbled and grateful for the opportunity you have given me to be the team lead of this great land of promise. For more than five years and counting with your prayers and support, and in spite of the turbulent economic climate that has defined most of the years, I have been in the saddle. We have experienced great and wonderful years of renaissance, of the reawakening of the Aquibom identity. We have seen five and a half years of great developmental strides and have confounded the cynics and drawn admirations even from those on the opposite side of the political divide. It could only have been God. My dear Quibomite, permit me to pause at this moment to pay glowing tribute to all the leaders who in the past 33 years have had the privilege and the honorous task of leading this blessed and wonderful state. Through the leadership they provided, they helped transform the state from a once rural landscape whose capital city of Uyo was a dusty provincial town into what today has become a destination of choice by Nigerians and indeed foreigners. Let me use this opportunity on behalf of all of us to thank them for the great service they rendered to our state. May God bless them all abundantly. My fellow Quibomites, we do not intend to render a report card on this joyous occasion and reel off all we have been able to achieve in the past five and a half years. Doing so would take hours, but suffice it to say that you can check our website or the publications of the Minister of Information for the complete package. For today's purpose, this anniversary will limit ourselves to mentioning a few, essentially, this speech is designed to thank God for his mercies, to ask for more grace, and to urge us to remain united in our commitment to celebrate and cherish all that we have, all that we stand for, and all that we hope for, the Aquibom Renaissance. As you may have observed, this year's event is low-keyed and devoid of usual celebrations and fanfare. This is so because we are living in an unusual times where all known norms and mechanics of our daily human interactions and engagements have changed. From March this year, 
we have fought and deployed resources to stem the spread of the deadly pandemic that has brought the world to a virtual standstill, the COVID-19 pandemic, which first hit the Chinese city of Wuhan, but today has spread to all parts of the universe. Let me use this opportunity to thank you for the understanding and cooperation you have shown in our determined efforts to manage this deadly virus. You have endured some discomfort, a restriction of some of your fundamental rights. But we did that as a responsible government whose eternal and most sacred responsibility is the protection of life and property. Because we are a proactive government, the COVID-19 pandemic did not meet us unprepared. Our huge investment in healthcare delivery system came in handy. Before the world was confronted with this pandemic, we had already set up a fully functional isolation center equipped with the most modern amenities at the Bone Specialist Hospital, supported by a functional intensive care unit. We did that because long before COVID-19 had arrived at our shores, we were prepared for other deadly diseases, such as Lassa fever, chickenpox, monkeypox, and the rest. Until recently, when we moved the case management of COVID-19 to our 300 bed infectious disease and control center at the Tumba Uran Low Government area. Another testimony to our vision in healthcare delivery. All cases were handled at the Boom Specialty Hospital. Compatriots in healthcare delivery, I am proud to announce that our investments have paid off. Today, because of the leadership we have provided, our state has recorded one of the lowest rates of infections and fatalities in the nation. It might interest you to know that since April 1 this year, the COVID-19 Management Committee, headed by the Secretary to the State Government, has met every night, working late into the morning, with me leading the charge. We have established two PCR laboratories, one of the most by any state government in the nation, and one which the Director General of NCDC, Dr. Chikwe Yekwazu, commended as the best in the nation. Let me again express our heartfelt gratitude to the medical professionals who worked and are still working tirelessly day and night to ensure that we have effective management processes for the deadly virus. You are all heroes and heroines of this huge effort. As you may have already observed, we have relaxed some of the restrictions we had earlier imposed. We will keep you updated on further development. I, however, urge you to continue to observe the protocols the World Health Organization and the NCDC have introduced, especially the wearing of face masks, regular washing of hands, and social distancing. Together with your support, we will win the fight against this pandemic. Our commitment to restructuring hospitals in all the 10 federal constituencies is ongoing and well on course. In the course of marking our 33rd anniversary, we will commission two world-class healthcare facilities at the old Emmanuel Hospital, Eket, and Old Cottage Hospital in Ona, respectively. Our imported world-class medical equipment have arrived and most have been cleared and ready for distribution to various hospitals. As part of a completion agenda, healthcare will remain a key priority of this government because I have always said we need a healthy population to drive our industrialization agenda. In education, we have constructed hundreds of classroom blocks through the Interministerial Direct Labor Coordinating Committee and equipped them with standard desks and other amenities. Last year, we held our first education summit and the recommendations have been received and are about to be implemented. We have brought education specialists from all over the world, led by Professor Hilary Yam, a globally celebrated educationist as consultant. Soon, you will see in broad and practical terms the impact and import of that summit through the rejigging of our education curriculum, 
we want to prepare our children to be competitive in the technology-driven world of 21st century. We believe that much as the social sciences remain basis of understanding, the human condition and relations, our students should be exposed to curricula that would make them future employers of labor, which countries like India, China, and the Asian Tigers have already demonstrated. Our free and compulsory education, complete with the payment of WIAC fees and other generous grants remain in place. Earlier on Monday, this week, we commenced the process of staggered resumption of schools with pupils in primary six in time for their common entrance examination coming up in October. Deaths for the resumption of secondary schools have been announced also. In the areas of agriculture and food sufficiency, we have worked hard to ensure that the staple foods we consume here are produced in our state. These strategic investments have helped us a great deal, especially during the months we experienced the almost total lockdown. We went into our reserves and brought our staple food for the palliative we gave our people. Our rice fields in Ini, our cassava mills, the fertilizer blending factory, the flour mill, and the conscious efforts made to crash the price of Gary and rice remain testimony to a government that cares. We are not only producing food for local consumption, we are also determined to ensure that we have a thriving agro light business sector manned by dedicated professionals to drive our export agenda. Innovation development, we have achieved huge strides. June last year, Ibom A began its commercial flight operations with two aircraft. Today, a little over a year after it commenced operations, we have added three almost brand new aircraft, bringing the total fleet to five. Ibom A has become a national sensation and a testimony to vision grounded in strategic planning. Just last week, we expanded our route to cover Enugu, and many more are coming. Plans are afoot to expand our routes to cover our West and Eastern African sub-regions. Ibom A has proved the cynics wrong, and it is an achievement every Apibomite should be mightily proud of. We are determined to become the aviation hub in the Gulf of Guinea, and our terminal building work, which is ongoing, promises to be a model in this part of Africa. Work too is ongoing on our maintenance, repair, and overall hangar facility. The industrialization policy of this administration remains on course, and in spite of the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, we have continued to expand our industrial base. In the next few days, we'll be commissioning the tissue paper making factory, which stands in our terms of being the latest in technology and the first in Africa of such technology. Other industries are in the pipeline. So far, we have attracted over 18 industries to this state, almost all of which you are well familiar with and do not bear repeating. If we had not slowed down our own efforts by COVID-19 pandemic protocols, we would have had more than 25 industries by now. We hope to bring in more industries next year as the nation and the world open up once again for business. In the area of infrastructure, our commitment to expanding our infrastructure through land, sea, and air remain abiding article of faith. Not only have we constructed numerous kilometers of road, very economical in nature, strategic roads across the state's three senatorial districts, the Uyo Ekorekbeno Road, which we met at less than five kilometers, is expected to be commissioned soon. Other dualized roads include Uyo Itinan Road, Itinan East West Road, Eket Ibono Road, Airport Okobo Road. In addition, Ring Road 2 and the 10 lane Ring Road 3 in Uyo Metropolis are in advanced stages of completion. While contract has been awarded for construction of surface and underground drains, structure for collection and final discharge of Uyo Metropolis flood water at IBB Uyo. The expansion of the airport road is ongoing 
Shortly after we were sworn in for our first step, we took the bold and decisive step to end the perennial flooding at Nsika Hidwok Avenue and other flood prone areas, as well as our emergency intervention with gully erosion on Kalabaitu Road and other areas in the state. Today, the flood that was once a nightmare to motorists is now history. In the next few days, we will commission some internal roads in some local government areas of this state. Apart from some of the major roads I've mentioned, we have done hundreds of internal roads in Uyo Metropolis, Ikorekbena and Oron respectively. Today, our state is linked by a rich network of roads across the three senatorial districts. Ours have been a promise made and promise kept in the area of infrastructural consolidation. Our more will come. We remain hopeful and optimistic that the Boom Deep Sea Port project will be realized in the course of this government. And we are working hard to ensure that we cooperate with all regulatory agencies in fulfillment of this desire. We thank His Excellency President Mohamedou Buhari, GCFR, for kindly approving the grant of license for the Liberty Oil and Gas Free Trade Zone, which spans five local government areas in the Ibom State. This will be a major gas hub in the entire Gulf of Guinea. Our plan for electricity by all by 31st December 2021 remains in focus, and we hope that the stakeholders in that sector will cooperate more with us to ensure the realization of this lofty goal. Let me use this moment to thank Ferre, my dear wife's pet and signature project, for working hard to advance the issues of women empowerment, the future of the girl child, the incidence of rape, and other humanitarian undertakings executed by our office. Our market women are happy. We remain dedicated to providing small-scale loans to aid their businesses. And to date, we are happy that the interest-free loans extended to them by this administration have been properly utilized. Our rural development scheme signed post greater things to come. Thousands of kilometers of feeder roads have been constructed and most villages now enjoy regular electricity supply. This has in no small measure stemmed the volume of rural urban migration. Permit me to use this opportunity to salute our youths for shunning courtism and other antisocial tendencies and for channeling their energies to using the works of their hands to earn a living. Most of our youths have embraced agriculture and are reaping the benefits bountifully. Others have found expressions in creative arts and this has further brought to the fore the philosophical underpinnings of our Dakada philosophy. To use the very aptly reflective campaign slogan by our social reorientation campaign, Mboma Change. Truly, things have changed for the better in our dear state, and it is forward ever, backward never. And our youths are in the vanguard of this great movement. Let me again ask you, my dear people, to de-emphasize the flaming passion of partisan politics and come together to build a solid state where our children will look back and say, thank God that we once had a revolutionary and visionary leader who saw things through the prism of the common good as opposed to doing so through political lenses. I call on our stakeholders across the political divide not to demarcate the state, or to sponsor spurious and false allegations against those they disagree with politically. We should not poison the well of our brotherhood with vitriolic attacks on our leaders using blackmail and other unwholesome tendencies. There is no need to heat up the system with unnecessary and unhelpful agitations for 2023 succession plans. When the time comes, our God, to whom all power belongs, will guide and direct our footsteps. Let me use this opportunity to caution all those who may entertain certain devious political ambitions to refrain from some of the antics which we are already aware of. Akwaibon people, we are monitoring you to see if you are executing the task for which you were selected out of 7 million people or you are busy using government's time to indulge in the project which time has not yet come. To our dear compatriots in the fourth estate of the realm, 
our gallant journalist. I thank you for the cooperation you have extended to my administration since we came on board in 2015 and urge you to continue to exercise the utmost level of circumspection and objectivity in your reportage. We do not have any other state to call ours except this blessed land of ours. My compatriots, 33 is a very significant number. It was the year our Lord Jesus died on the cross in order to set us free of our sins. On these 33 years of our anniversary, may it mark the beginning of our release to experience the fulfillment of our huge potentials as a state. And may whatever sins we may have committed be forgiven and a new chapter of development, of continuous peaceful coexistence, of enduring love for one another, of the respect to our emblem, flag, and creed of our collective identity, which will be launched later this morning, remain the courts that bind us all. May God continue to remember us as a people and as a state with his enduring favor, grace, and his salvation. Once again, let us share the joy of this milestone. But let us remember that when the children of Israel occupied the promised land, Caleb was not satisfied. He said that at his strength was in the days of Moses, so was his strength in the days of Joshua. And he demanded for a mountain to be given to him. As our strength was when this state was created, so it is now. And he who brought us into this land shall give us every mountain that we want in this country. Mountains of entrepreneurship, mountains of peace and prosperity, mountains of professional excellence, and mountains of spiritual glory. Let's celebrate while praying for the mountains tomorrow. Finally, let me end this speech by quoting from the refreshingly memorable letter penned to J.S. Allison on April 22, 1848, by the 12th President of the United States of America, Zachary Taylor. I quote, I have no private purpose to accomplish, no enemies to punish, nothing to serve but my country, unquote. Fellow Aquibomite, I have no private purpose to accomplish, no enemies to punish, no acts to grind, no animosity to entertain, no hatred to nurture, no other propelling impulses than to serve this state to the best of my God's given ability and to ensure a greater future for us and our children. So help me God. Thank you and happy Akwaibom Day. Akwaibom, Idakida, Ami, Medakanda, happy 33rd anniversary. <laughs>